god, I am mega triggered. You offended your own business. You like you your what? Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and I have a very familiar face here with me and I'm sure you guys recognize him. He's uh, one of the stars in Blink Empire, uh, one of the top trending shows in on Singapore's Netflix and of course it's uh, popular all over the world. So this is the only Singaporean on Blink Empire and he is Kane Lim. Hi! Yeah. Hi! Actually, we're more than just a... Uh... I'm more than just a Blink Empire star. I'm a friends with you for a long time. Yes, so. yes. So today, uh, we are very fortunate to have Kane here with us on a little chat here on my YouTube channel and also going to be putting this whole episode on my Spotify. So since we are friends, we have been friends for a while now, you know, um, I think that this interview is going to be quite fun. We're going to have a very casual chat and ask you all the questions, right, that all of the Singaporean viewers and the viewers around the world have been dying to ask you, I guess. I'm super excited and like I'm worried that my Singlish comes out. So right. please embrace <laughs> we, we are going to test you and make you speak some Singlish later, okay? So, you know, you have been in LA for uh, eight years already, right? Around uh, eight over years, yes. Mm. Yeah, so like since you moved from, you know, America to... Uh, in the past few years, last time, whenever Chinese New Year, you always come back to Singapore. And I have very fond memories of going to your place to... Or rather your parents' place, I guess, to, you know, have a gathering there, have really nice food. Your mom cooks really nice food. And you win a lot of money, so I have to say you're really good at yeah. gathering. <laughs> so I actually, I, I miss that. And like, you know, I'm, you know, it's Chinese New Year in a few days and I really miss the celebrations and everything. Mm. But you have to tell all the viewers you're one of the best gamblers I know. No lie. You know, Kane is very entrepreneurial, right? Like every time during uh, Chinese New Year, he'll have these like um, uh, Buddha like beats, right? Then he will just be like, you guys, are you interested to get one? You'll wang you, right? For your <laughs> gambling. Oh, right? it really yes, works. it's true. It really works. And I put it in my car because I love those beats, Um, you know? And then like the money, you actually got the beats from like a temple in LA, right? Yeah, no, I got the beats uh, in Singapore and then mm. I got the that's it. So all the profit that I make goes to the temple. Yes. I'm not supposed to send. It's just supposed to go and like make you what? So that's why you what so much. I remember last year you made like, was it like 1K, 2K in like a few? <laughs> Don't tell people. <laughs> they, they, they are so rich. Next, I'm going to be on the cast of Big Empire as well. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So let's continue on. Sorry, guys. Um, If there's a break here, we just got a technical error because Zoom is the worst. <laughs> yes. So... Back to asking Kane all the difficult questions. Okay, lah, actually it's not that difficult today. <laughs> so, how, yeah. how how is it like um, spending your Chinese New Year in LA uh, this year versus Singapore? They are obviously so much more different. Um, I have less money <laughs> my parents. So that's an issue. Um, it's very different because we don't do like reunion dinners and like we don't have gambling here and also because of COVID. So like I really miss Singapore and like you know, I, I was thinking to come back, but like, if I quarantine two weeks, like, I can't, I can't do that, so. Yeah, it's such a waste of time. Don't you guys, like, since your friends who are all Asian, right, in LA and stuff, don't you guys do, like, the usual stuff, like gambling and all that? The past few years, I've been back in Singapore, so, mm. like, um, they don't really gamble here. I think it's a very Singapore tradition, mm. even, like, low hay and all that stuff, like, they don't do it here. Uh, my friends are not as wild as Singaporeans, I would say. And also, the I, I feel like the Singapore Chinese New Year is has to be like one of the best festivities ever. Really? All followers or viewers should experience the Singapore Chinese New Year. <laughs> you know, seven days of party and taking money and gambling, like, who doesn't like it, you know? Yeah, everyone likes it, except the people who have to give out the ang pao's, I guess. No. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Even after I got married, I feel like it's quite a joy to give out ang pao's because I'll write, like, my well wishes for people on the ang pao and it feels, like, quite nice, like, I guess. I didn't get a well wish from you last year. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna write it for you. Are you sure or not? I feel like I did. Maybe not. I didn't read it. Maybe I just took the money. I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So recently, um, you know, uh, you have been interviewed on the Ellen show. That was crazy because my my Netflix PR team reached out. They're like, Ellen wants you, and only requesting you solo. And I'm like, Are you kidding me? Like, just me? Wow. You know? And I was like, Why don't I feel it's always better to in, like you know do an interview with like Kevin or another castmate? It's easier to bounce off ideas and just talk. 
And then when I found out she requested just me solo, I was like, I was a bit surprised and at the same time, a little nervous because come on, like it's such a big production yeah. and then it's Zoom, you know? So i rather do it in the studio, but like, um, you know, yeah, to get like such a invitation was amazing. Crazy, mm. it was crazy, yeah. Is, I'm like so proud of you. I can't believe I saw you on the Ellen show. It's like such a huge thing, you know? I think I might be the only um, Singaporean to be on the show. I think yeah, so. Yeah, it's crazy. I just I just wish... Yeah. Sorry, what do you say? I don't think there's anyone else that's on her show that's Singaporean, I think. That is really, really cool. Huh? So like, but how do you feel about the interview? Wise? Like, okay, my honest opinion, right? Like when I personally watched it, I felt like she was not as cheerful as usual. Like she was, I, I haven't been watching her show like since her whole controversy thing happened. Like people talked about how she was like a bad employer or something. I cannot remember exactly what it was. It's quite a small little thing, but like, um, like I felt like she, you were, you were really like charming and nice and smiley and happy and very likable on the show. I felt, but I, I felt like she was a bit cold. Do you feel that? I, I understand where you're coming from because yeah. like when I, it's number one, we're not in the studio, right? So mm. I know there's so much technical stuff you have to do and it's really tiring. Like I waited like just to prep for that interview. Like we, we I waited for, we did like a four hour prep, like split up in like two weeks. And four then, hours? Like, day, yeah, four hours. Like the, her producers would talk to me, kind of ask like, oh, these are the questions that are going to come out like in this order. And obviously when the interview came out, it was not in that order, right? Right, right. <laughs> So my first question, I just went off on, on like a tangent. Uh, but like, um, yeah, I totally understand what you're saying because I think also because we're not in a studio mm. and just being like, you know, on Zoom, it's not easy because I see, I was watching the show prior to my interview and like there's so much technical stuff and it's mm. really, tiring. you can tell like she's tired. So yeah. I don't think she wasn't interested, you know, but yeah. I, 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 feel, I, I know what you're saying because it was a bit, I, I, uh, uh, what's a better word than like luster? <laughs> I'm going to take, take one of my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> At least she gave you really nice shoes. But uh, I, I didn't feel like it was like personal against you when I watched the show. I felt like it was more like maybe she just was feeling very serious because of her whole controversy thing. So like, have you heard about that? What do you think about it? I read about it, but you know the media is nonsense, right, Shashua? So I never try to read what the media says until I talk to them in person. Mm. I, you know, I worked with her. I worked with her producers, and I thought she was. They were very easy to work with, and they gave me their own personal numbers. They're like, call me anytime if you're nervous, you want to talk about stuff. So I, um, I know there's so much. Um, you know, even me posting that people are like, how can you support Ellen? You know, I'm like, she didn't do anything to me. So yeah. I always give people like the benefit of the doubt and like, you know, it was a great interview and like I got shoes, so I'm not going to complain. <laughs> For shoes. Those are really, really nice shoes. We're going to flash a picture of the shoes out here. Do you post the shoes on your Instagram? Yes, I posted it. I have like, I think like 230,000 views. Wow. On a shoe. On a shoe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, speaking of your Instagram fame, how much followers do you gain since the show started? It's crazy because when the show started, I was at 140, I think, 140K. And then um, right now, I'm like 415,000. 450. Wow, that's a lot of growth. It's a big growth and like it happens so fast and I think it's still growing. And um, But what's amazing was my friend did like a Google search on me, you know, the search thing. There was like 10 million searches. Wow, that's a lot, eh? Mm. Yeah. I, I think in general people are just really curious about the lives of like rich people like they just want to find out like you know exactly where you get your money from you know yeah, who you and like Kevin had thing. like 1 million search and then Kim Lee had 100 million searches on her oh my god that's the, it's the effect of boobs you know I know <laughs> I wish life was so easy. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> oh my gosh. So how 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 did your life change after that? Do you get a lot of DMs nowadays? From oh my god, I get so many. Um I think I how did my life change? My life is still the same. I still like think that I have a lot of things to see through, a lot of endorsement deals. I'm shooting a very big uh photo shoot with a big brand next week. And then a lot of hotels and like just deals coming through. And like, thanks to you as well. I know I reached out to you and I, I'm like, how much do I charge the actually? I don't know how to charge, you know? Right, so, right. Um, yeah, I'm definitely very busy, and but I have to really like focus and see what's the right deal or fit for me as well. I'm not just going to promote anything that or anyone that pays me. 
Mm, I think now that you have sort of made it big in like uh, US, I think it's like, you know, it's it's tough for for your parents to ever get you back to Singapore ever again because all of your work is going to be there now. Like if you have this, all these big endorsements and stuff. Yeah, and it's 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 so it's also very humbling because I I, I let me like when I go get gas, when mm. I go get ice cream, when I go to the anything anywhere I go, there are people recognizing me, even with the mask. Mm. And like I was chased by a Lamborghini that day on the road. They were like, oh my god, gang, okay, no, and I'm like, no, we're gonna die, you know. <laughs> a Lamborghini. So I, I think it's very humbling, like just the amount of press and also the recognition because um, remind you, like not many people have social media and don't follow the my Instagram, but most of them watch TV. So mm. you know, I saw like people that are like in their 80s, and like I saw this elderly woman, she's like, I love your show, by the way. And like, I was like, and she's like white hair and everything, and like it's so surprising and also very humbling, yeah. Have there been bad comments as well? Um, someone said like, I mean, there's so many bad comments, Sasha, you know that, right? Like mm. someone was like, oh, you know, you went too much for your fillers. I'm like, if I want to look like Tweety Bird, let me look like fucking Tweety Bird, okay? <laughs> <laughs> You're just like, okay, fuck it, it's my face. I'm not fat. I want to embrace my body. I want to do a bit of fillers. I want to do a bit of Botox. Who the fuck cares? And also, you know, the camera adds like 15, 20 pounds to you. I don't look like that, you know? I was like, yeah, you don't. Like this big. <laughs> <laughs> you just gotta laugh it off, right? I mean, you're. Yeah. I mean, talking. I'm talking to you. You're. You're the number one at getting like hate comments. So yeah, you it's just true. Laugh it off, right? It's true. It's true. I think that the haters love you in a certain way, and they're more obsessed sometimes than than the people who like you. So yeah, but honestly, I'm so surprised because I don't have as much hate as I thought I would. Most of the comments were super positive and also thanks to, you know, I think the show that was portrayed me in a very good light. And I'm yeah. like that in person as well. So like, um, I'm actually really, I, I'm, I have like, pretty, I think I've read less than 10 hate comments, to be honest with you. Less than 10? That's like an amazingly little amount. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Actually, no, <laughs> on YouTube, actually YouTube has the worst comments. Mm. You realize, right? I feel like YouTube has the worst comments because I don't know why for some reason I feel YouTube has the worst comments. Yeah. I think Facebook usually has the worst comments. Like, oh, it's okay. I don't have Facebook. So <laughs> <laughs> wow, less than ten. I think it's also because I feel like the way that, like, you behaved on the show, it's really very unobjectionable. Like you, you seem to me like I really liked you on the show because, um, I yeah, like you were, you're saying like, it put you in a really good light. Like uh, Anna's clearly very interesting. So I did a poll where I asked everyone, you know, who is your favorite Bling Empire, uh, character, and I got people to answer it, and uh, you came in number two after Anna. I would put Anna as number one too. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just because Anna is so like uh, elusive and yet like wise in her ways and she has all this she represents like a different generation I mean no one has seen like a 60 year old on camera like just not giving a fuck flashing her boobs you know yeah 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 like, unapologetic and her humor is very different in many in, in, in you know it's very dry humor but like it's very soft as well but it gets mm. you and so I think she represents another like She's basically like an icon, I would say, you know, just representing a different era. And I think that's what makes her so attractive as well. And I, mm. I you know, she's trending on Twitter all day, all the time. Are you very close to Anna? I'm actually the closest to her. Uh, I, the funny thing is I didn't know her prior to filming. I known her only through filming and because she's friends of Jeff Jenkins. Mm. Jeff did a Simple Live, the Kardashians, everyone. So I actually met her through filming and we became super close friends after filming. Yeah. I see. I see. Like um, you told me then, um, you know, I think it was like last year's Chinese New Year dinner. Like then you were saying that, you know, you were filming your new show. And at that time you said that it was just going to be named like Bling Empire. And yeah. I think maybe at that time you didn't really know the name yet or something. And then you told me that the producer is going to be the guy who did the Kardashians. And I just knew that it was going to be like a huge hit at that time uh, but then you were still you were still like I don't know if it's going to you know it's going yeah, to yeah no, I'm, I'm st I still don't think it's like I you know why because I I try not to over like be excited about it because this mm. I always believe there's always going to be a drop so I always have to keep like a like a level head when it comes to fame and everything or success so I try not to be super excited but like the the response has been like overwhelming because like you take for example china with like no netflix 
and people in China are talking about it, and China will get an article about it. So I think wow. it's, it's a huge testament to the show, like countries without Netflix talking about it. So I think it's quite amazing. Well, I think it's about Asians, and also because I think in China, right, the culture is such that they they love like you know topics regarding wealth, like because Chinese, right, we are like very open about like buying LV and stuff like that. So I think I think they they love it, and like back to you on the show, I uh you know I think a lot of the reason why a lot of people liked you so much, it really felt like you were the you know you had no conflict on the show, like whereas Anna had conflict with uh Kim and she also had conflict with Christine, so it brought out like you know you can see the cat fights and stuff like that, which makes her interesting but you had no you you didn't have anyone to fight about and you still had so many people love you on the show because it really felt like you were the gel uh for all the the cast members and that everyone liked you and you got along with everybody and you made everyone sort of happier together and you had all these like zinger one-liners like my personal favorite was when you just suddenly blurted out that kelly didn't have enough anal sex (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, you, know, that, that, you know the thing about me Sasha I'm just like I love to entertain myself so in my yeah. head I have no filter and the producers love it right. you know, and also I think why people don't take it too seriously because I literally laugh at my own jokes too right. you know the, the anal comment like oh my god like we had a meeting before the show premiered and then and then I was like I, we had a phone call and I was like guys I have to apologize to everyone like I said some stuff and then <laughs> Kelly was like you said I like you know I'm like did I say that <laughs> Was she angry at you? You know, we shot for like four months. So we have so much content. I don't mm. even know what made it cut till the premiere of the show. And we, we watched it at the same time as you guys. So and that was one of my favorite comments too. <laughs> was she angry with you after you said that? She's angry. But like, I hopefully she gets a lot of like sex endorsements. Or like, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully she can make some money from it. <laughs> It was so painful watching that scene because, like, I I felt that okay, my least favorite cast member is Andrew. Uh, I think a lot of people's least favorite is him. Uh, but like you know, it felt like he was putting on a face when he was filming. It felt like he was acting a role. Um, I think that's why he was he wasn't like people's favorite because he's an actor to begin with. So I think maybe he felt that this was a role he had to play. Where else, all of us had no acting experience, and all of us just were like ourselves the whole time. So I think that's why he came across that way. So maybe if you go forward and film, I would advise him like, hey, you don't have to act. Be yourself. <laughs> but I think his, uh, his natural self is simply not very interesting. So I, I think that <laughs> they should just ask him from the show, right? <laughs> um, yeah, back, back to the Kelly Anal comment. Like, you know, at, for that one moment, uh, you guys have to watch Blink Empire if you haven't watched it. It's an amazing scene where Kane is in a cafe or a restaurant with another cast member, Andrew, and he's bringing up how he is not giving his girlfriend enough anal sex. And- I was trying to help the relationship. <laughs> <laughs> the context is that yes, Kane was trying to help the relationship and you can see his face just go from actor Andrew to real pissed off Andrew. <laughs> like he was so He was actually like the camera didn't even show how angry he was. He was actually pissed with me. Yeah, I can, tell, so, I can tell. I can tell. He was yeah, he probably he was probably angry with me still, so <laughs> whoops. <laughs> you know, but I like know, I, I broke so much stereotypes for Asian people because Asian people don't like to talk about sex. Right. But to talk you know, sex. I think I broke just so many barriers. For all the women that enjoy it. So people that love anal sex, thanks, thanks to me. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like, thanks to Kane, I'm open about loving anal now. Open the, 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 the door for you. <laughs> <laughs> I really just enjoyed it so much because he was so pissed off and you were just sitting there giggling and ignoring him. <laughs> <laughs> that's something I regret if people ask me what I regret saying that's something I probably regret it saying <laughs> what about like uh, you know like uh, I remember texting you after the show was premiered telling you how much I loved it and it was just it was just unbelievable to me that you know certain parts of the show just felt like they were too good to be true it felt like it was scripted yeah, can you mention which part you thought and then I will kind of like t- walk you through it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was, uh, I remember telling Kane, I, I felt like uh, there's just no way that Kim didn't know that her father has passed away and uh, that her reaction seemed a bit like uh, fake when she was, she was... Uh, I think she was super shocked. So the entire scene was 
you know, uh, she didn't want to find out where her dad was, honestly. And like the producers were like, we have to chase the story. You guys have to follow up and let's find the ending. Even the dad's not alive. We have to go and chase the story. And like, we just thought it would be a great idea to travel to South Carolina. Mm. And like, you know, the scene was not supposed to end that way. You know, um, the scene was supposed to be like, we couldn't find him. And then last minute the call came in. Ah. It was crazy. Like not, nothing was scripted. And like, even to find the, you know, we found him at a nail salon, right? The, the mm. dad's brother. You know, I yelled 19, yelled, I, I yelled 19 nail salons before we found him. I found him on the third Yelp nail salon. So most people don't see the whole process. And maybe mm. that's why it came across like, oh my God, this is too good to be true. Right. And then we re- re- when we revealed it to Kim, she was like, you know, like even till today, she's like, you know, at the time I was just so shocked and I couldn't believe, you know, can you imagine if someone just breaks to you like, hey, your, your, your father is dead, right? You'd be like, and then there's yeah. cameras all around, right? Right. So, as you said, like, this is too good to be true. And I think that's why Netflix was so proud of the project and why mm. they pushed the project so much is because that this was so organic. Like, even mm. um, not just Kim's scene, like, uh, even Cherie giving birth. You know, the right. producers were stand by, you know? Her vagina was out for the whole world to see. <laughs> like, <laughs> this show is, like, next level crazy. We have we have boobs, we have anal, we have vaginas. It's like... yes. Everything. If nothing was scripted, do you think we want to put our boobs on public? It just happens because we, we, at some point, you don't have to care about the cameras. You just be yourself. Right, right. Like, how about um, Anna's boobs then? Like, you were, like, I asked you about it and then you said that she just, she's just like that. Like, she just brings... She goes shopping. Obviously, she closed down all the stores. So mm-hmm. it's like, we go shopping at like 8 p.m. where it's closed. And, you know, there'll be like tourists walking and she's just naked and she'll stand at the door and like, I'm like, Anna, cover. She's like, no, I want to show it to them. I'm like, I'm a mannequin. And then she's just <laughs> there, right? So that's, she's like that in person. Without cameras or with cameras, she is the same person you get. You know, just doesn't care. She just doesn't care. Wait, wait, wait. So you've seen her like a vagina? Not vagina. I'm not okay. Vagina. But I'm sure if she had to strip, I'm sure I'll see it. And she <laughs> You know? that that is just next level crazy like anna is anna is um she's mixed right like she's she's russian japanese her mom is japanese and then her dad is russian ah i see another scene that i really couldn't believe was in the show uh was of course the penis pump because that just felt like it, it was staged like it was not no actually you know anna was after that scene happened um, Anna kind of thought like, maybe I don't want this to air. I don't want, I don't need to be on the show because for her to put like, a, like for her to be in public and to show a penis pump, it does, she doesn't need to do this. Mm. So I think she contemplated of like not leaving the show, but like kind of telling them to take it out. And, and honestly, the penis pump was not, was not planted because even Kim and Guy going up there was not planted at all. They just went and did their own thing. That's why you can see on my face, right? I was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. I think that became a meme as well. So like um, when it came to that, um, that scene was, I know a lot of people ask me that question, but no, that scene was not planted because someone like Anna would never want something like that on public TV. Right. So how, how did she manage to get convinced to kind of keep it in in the end? I think I think she knew that it would help the show as well. And she was like, this is fucking good TV. Right. You know, at the same time, she's risking her reputation and stuff. But obviously, it's not her penis pump, right? So I'm like, Anna, who cares? You're so generous. You let people stay at your house. If it's their penis pump, no one's going to think it's your penis pump, right? Well, I thought it was her penis pump. <laughs> what? I mean, who else would it be? That was her guest shower. It's not, it's not hers. Oh, somebody. Okay. Somebody, okay. Yeah. I see, I see. Another another part that I, I, I remember about the show very distinctly is this scene where uh, Jamie had uh, was thrown into the swimming pool. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, Jamie's here was thrown into the swimming pool. And I remember like, um, so to describe the scene to everyone who's like, uh, haven't watched Blink Empire yet, uh, Jamie was thrown into the swimming pool by a cast member, Kevin. And in the process of being thrown, the camera caught a, uh, uh, quite a, a few seconds of uh, her Zhao Gengying, right? So you can see her underwear. And uh, I remember pausing that scene because I was like, what is on her underwear? And it was, she was wearing these nude underwears that looked like they had white patterns on it. And I was just like, okay, well, I don't know what underwear. This is really weird underwear. And then I just I just let it be. And then after that, I, I somebody told me that it was the uh, wings of her pet. Like coming out of the underwear. 
I honestly had no idea until I saw Twitter. You know, I was just following on Twitter and then I saw, I'm like, what is this patch there, right? Yeah. And I texted her, even, because even we didn't know that it was there. I don't think she knew it was there right. until the show came out and then it became obviously like a TikTok meme. <laughs> like, it was yeah. like slow-mo, like dun dun dun, you know? And, yeah. Like, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I still have no idea. Is this menstruation or? I think it looks like it was the, the wings of a uh, maybe a small pet because I don't think she was having her period. Otherwise, the pool. Know, people blood, a, what? Most people thought it was the period. So I, I actually don't know, but like that became like a meme and like it was just trending all over like TikTok and stuff like that. Well, what do you, what do you feel about that scene? Cause like when I saw it, I was just like, well, she's a billionaire's daughter, or, uh, you know, and it's like, it's not very nice of them to do something like that. Cause like, you know, I think being open about like anal sex or, you know, showing your boobs when you think your boobs are nice. It's like, a, it's a different thing from being thrown in a pool. Like you were not aware that you're going to show this and it was a complete accident. And then it's, I think she was a bit, I mean, she wanted to sue Kevin just by throwing her in the pool. Oh, there, really? was scene, there was another scene, there was another scene that, because like throughout the filming, every scene, there's water, Kevin throws Jamie in the pool. Oh, it's no. not true because you guys only seen one scene, right? But if you truly watch like what we filmed, like every scene, she would throw her in the pool. And like, she actually sent like Kevin a text, she's like, my, I'm going to set my lawyers and you're going to get like a cease and desist or something like that. Because... Every happened every time. It's not just. <laughs> <laughs> I wish the show was longer because we filmed so many incredible scenes. You know, it's crazy. They they should do a season two just based on uh, you know second footage that you has have not been. No, there was so uh, much second footage, Sasha. There's so 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 many like so so much good footage as well. Yeah. Mm. So like uh, you know, I just felt like the show was not being very nice when they did that. Like they could have just mosaic it it was so easy but they just decided to put it in anyway so i think with netflix there's no like mosaicing or like you know they're just like okay whatever too bad right i think netflix they don't they don't they don't they don't care about that yeah so you you don't get any uh you and a cast you guys don't get any say on what goes in and what does not go in to be honest like going into the project i had to have a lot of faith and trust with the producers mm. so you know the first week was not easy because you're letting these people in your lives and then you're talking about your pub your 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 it's just like personal stuff right mm. so it was not easy and like at, at some point yeah, i had to be like you know what you know just take whatever content let's make a good show because i've seen what jeff's done with um the simple life with the kardashians and i'm like they, they are so successful and like, at the same time it's such a good show Mm. so at some point you have to be like just like you have to trust it and then also it's netflix i know i i, I know netflix is very careful with what they put out to the world it has to be it has to fit the timing as well and there's certain scenes like we said riots they didn't even put the word right in because it just didn't fit the mm. uh, timing so i i'm i trust netflix and trust the producers yeah Right. But I, I think, uh, you know, a lot of people would think that it's like, it's going to be tough to find a cast like that ever again, because, you know, a lot of uh, people who are very rich, they just don't really need the fame and they don't, they don't need the hassle that comes with it. Yes, because there's, yeah. I mean, you know, living in LA, there's a lot of security issues, uh, you know, just public life is not, you know, you have to be very careful because of the, you know, the riots mm. and like burglary and stuff like that. And you're right, to find a cast like that, I think Netflix was so happy as well because it was so organic to begin with. Like my, my I've known Kelly for seven years. I've known Christine for years mm. and Shari for like two, three years. So I think um, to find an Asian cast that puts it all on the line, not easy. And I think that's why the show was so successful because we kind of laid it uh, all, all up there. Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. Let's, let's talk. Oh, your cat is like meowing for your attention. She's in the... Oh, come here. She's in the Fendi bag. Oh, I want to be in a Fendi bag. Famous. You know how I know the show's famous? Because she was like, that people are tweeting about my cat. I'm like, oh. Oh, that's cute. I think you... I've seen a few memes about you. I love the memes. It's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so, like... um, What else? Let me just see some of the questions. Um... You know, what are like some of the, like, let's talk a little bit more about you. Like during the, the show, you mentioned like shopping malls and stuff. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Like, are, are there malls that we know about? And I got in so much trouble for talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> my brother, you know, my brother is very, 
private and my family is very private. So I got a lot of nonsense from that. So <laughs> to be fair, it wasn't you who said it, it was Kevin who said it. Exactly. Exactly. And I, I told them like, hey, like, um, uh, yeah, I don't know. He said, he said like banking. I'm like, we're not even in banking and tanking. I'm like, I don't know what's tanking. What tanking? <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've met your family and um, they are really such nice people. They're so down to earth and so friendly. And like um, like you said, like, they're very, you have said many times to me also that they're very, they're very down to earth. They're not like extravagant, right? They're not. Actually, like I tell them to be more like, I'm like, dad, buy a Lamborghini. It's like, for what? You know? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it runs through my family, all my uncles. They're all super wealthy. But at the same time, they're, the, you know, I have one uncle that wears the same singlet for like the, the whole year, you know, and no. <laughs> no, seriously. And I think is for them, it's just um, wealth is not important. It's just the success and, you know, also giving back. I think we met through, I met you through um, a, a fundraiser as well. So mm. that's how we met. And that's how my parents are and truly are, you know, as people. They're not flashy. You met my mom. You know? Yeah, yeah. And she cooks really well. Yes. <laughs> super, super friendly. Very, very nice people. Yeah. And then you have two brothers as well, right? What do what do they think about the, the show and all that? Uh, I don't know what they think about the show. I know that they said like, okay, they, my brother said this. He said, you were famous before, but now you're truly famous. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I think don't, don't, don't forget all of us here in Singapore. Okay? No, what like, Please don't mention a family. Don't mention us. But it's so difficult because... You know, there's some parts I have to share. I think I'm the most, like, not elusive one on the show, but, like, there's certain mm. things I know I don't talk about and I just have to respect. You know, like, you and your husband or you're, like, and or your family, you just have to have some, at least yeah. some privacy for, you know, personal. Mm. Like, yeah, I understand what you mean because, like, my husband is also very private and I lead a very public life. And I think for people like you and me, we're just really open about stuff and it's difficult for people like us to understand why is it that they're so fearful of people knowing things, you know? Yes. So, yes. yeah, sometimes it just slips out because we are just like, you know, the way that you talk and the way I talk is just like, oh, okay. I know, I did some, some interviews then you're like, my mom was like, build things. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> oh no. Now you're not going to get your building. No, you know, I, on the Ellen show, I was like, you know, I said my dad was going to give me a building and then I was like, it was a joke. I, I told my mom, my mom was like, how can you joke about stuff like that? But I'm like, you don't think when you're in a, such a big interview, you know, you know, you just have no filter at all. So I'm like, I have to be more careful with my words. But mm. things like that just come out and I truly meant it as a joke, you know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What what do you think about like, you know, um, let's talk about you for a few more moments, just you, not your family. So y- you went off to LA when you were very young and you started your own business there. Like what exactly do you do? I do real estate investments. I look at investment opportunities. I look at, uh, we look at hospitality deals, uh, wellness deals. I'm actually very into the plant-based um, space right now. So I'm mm. looking to invest in like plant-based foods. Um, other than that, that's what I do. I don't have a nine to five, um, you know, and I'm not, um, I guess I'm an influencer now. <laughs> right. You know, I used to have this like stigma that influencers are bad, but now I'm like, I'm going to run with it and we should be really proud of it. You know, because what we do is not easy as well. What yeah, you do is not easy. It's so much time, you know? So I have to, you know, I'm happy. I will call myself influencer. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's just like I think most people when they see you on the show you are like full of like branded shoes and bling and you know like leopard skin stuff and it's just hard to imagine you right like you know dealing with stocks and like property and things like that that like you are I was just talking to my uh, my family office about like you know an investment they were looking at and like one of the investments just closed so I, I do a lot of boring stuff that people don't see and also there's nothing there's no even if I show it no one's going to be interested in it right you know? yeah, yeah 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 you're right it's quite boring <laughs> But but you, I think I read it uh, in an interview somewhere that you are like a millionaire yourself already. So you must be very successful. I spent most of it, Sasha. <laughs> you spent most of it on shoes? <laughs> on everything. When I first started making money, I was spending 1.5 times more of that. So, you know, I, I'm very grateful for my parents to like have uh, supported me and also help back certain money for me because um, growing up, like, you know, when you have access to money, like, you know... Um, mm just don't think 
And I'm so grateful that that also I'm really happy I did that as well and spent that money because um, now I'm more careful with my money and finances. Mm. Yeah. Well, when I hang out with you, I don't feel like you are very extravagant. Like, like what are some of the like yum stuff that you do? Oh, I don't like to pay for valet. I used to valet. I used to valet all my cars and the front. I'll pay like $100, you know, mm-hmm. valet my car. No, I'm like free parking. Uh, text my car. I'm going to be free parking, free parking, you know. <laughs> and then plus... I always ask for discount at the stores. Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> I've seen you do it. I've seen you do it. You're like, the first thing you go in, like, got discount, got sale. You're, exactly. <laughs> so I don't think people see that side of me. And I think everyone should be very smart with their money. Mm. There's certain things I'll buy full price. There's certain things I'll pay for. You know, like Louis Vuitton, it's like always full price. You pay for it, right? But like, yeah. there's some stuff that will go on sale. So why not just go for sale? And also being, I think also it's Singaporean and grain to be kiasu. Yeah, well. yeah. I was at, okay for example I was buying cosmetics that day I was buying the mare right mm. I was like got free sample you know? <laughs> can you not be like that I agree you cream, know you are famous now you know can you not I know I know and then I thought about it I'm like I think this guy knows me from the show <laughs> oh shit for like the mare samples it's fucking loud queen, but like what can I do <laughs> he will probably just be like oh guys it's a typical Asian thing to do huh <laughs> <laughs> uh, then okay let's talk about like being rich right you know a lot of uh, rich people they they tend to be very private and very reclusive but you're very open about your your wealth like you know what are some of the pros and cons of choosing either methods of living what do you think i think i have decided to have my career in like the creative field so in, in no choice we have to be out there we have to be on instagram we have to promote stuff we have to be mm. open but some stuff as you said we can keep private like our family mm. and personal life, as best as we can um you know obviously in this sector of my business i have to be up out there but for example like let's like for a teacher or like let's say another field or, or someone else in a different field you don't have to be out there but in my specific case i have no choice i have to be open mm. i have to you know, that's how you, that's how we make money, right? That's, right. <laughs> that's true. That's true. You have to influence people. <laughs> but you know, I think I think being so open about your wealth, right? It also has a lot of cons. Like, do people try to scam you of money or like try to? I mean, like, I mean, friends. You have to be so careful with friends and like you know people you sur- surround with or like you know moving to LA. You know, so many times I get pitched. You know, like oh, you want to invest in a movie? I'm like, okay, tell me your returns. Tell me your IRR. Tell me your you know. And, it's, and they're like, oh, you just get your credits at the end of the show. I'm like, who the fuck cares about that, right? Right, yeah. I get really insulted that people think I'm just someone with money. I'm actually someone that knows business. I know like IRRs. I know the terms. I know. So I think when people try to scam me, I think it's hilarious. And like, you know, um, and I get so many of that. And, you know, what, what can I do, right? Yeah. What about people borrow money from you? Do people borrow money from you? In the past, but no more. I've learned to say no. I think my personality in the past was always like, let's try to help you benefit of the dog. But now like my dad taught me something. So I have to share with the world. I think like mm. my dad was like, every, make a dose of pianzi until they prove you wrong. Oh. In the past, I'm like every, in, in the past, you know, like I always taught myself, everyone is good, but now you have to go I'm not saying that everyone's bad, but start with everyone's bad. And then you go to, Oh, this mm. person's good. When, if you go with everyone's good, then like you're fucked. Right. Right. Unfortunately, we live in a world with people that are greedy and we have a lot of desire. So we just have to be very careful with that. Yeah. You know, like um, I was also, you know, thinking about this because, uh, you know, we have a common friend, Kin Lim, and she is, uh, of course, very rich herself. And I constantly see people trying to like scam her of her money. Um, and it's uh, very sickening to watch. Uh. So I feel like, you know, this is one of the struggles of being rich that people don't really see, that you don't really know whether someone is a true friend of yours or not, or uh, because they might just be a friend of your wealth. And yeah. I, yeah, you know, like um, one of the things about uh, our friend Kim is that she's very humble, very down to earth, right? So yeah, in, in certain ways, like in other ways, she's like, I'm going to fly private jet, right? But, when shopping is like, okay, yeah, I'm That's a different thing, no, yeah. No, no. I, I definitely agree with you in terms of like talking to like, you know how I see people that are humble, they talk to their staff with the respect. Yeah. They talk to aunties like with so much respect. And Kim is someone, actually she's watching the show. She texted me uh, last night. She's like, I'm watching the show now. And I, you know, and I said, thank you so much for the support. And I said like, someone like her is, you're right. It's so down to earth. You truly know her. She doesn't give a shit. She's friends with everybody from every yeah. walk. Yes. Any walk of life. And, but the thing is, I want to say, like, we're not stupid. We are the hardest to con from because our parents are so successful. 
We, you cannot confirm us now. <laughs> no, that's not true. Kim is very easy to confirm, please. <laughs> <laughs> You need to help her. You need to help her. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm trying to help her, right? So anyway, my point is that you know because she she uh, she's friends with everybody. Like she's friends with you know her hairstylist. She's friends with uh, you know like people uh, makeup artists. Like people from all walks of life. Like I said, and sometimes I tell her you know sometimes um, I see other other rich friends of mine. They only make friends with other rich people, and to a certain degree, I can I can see why is it that they do that because. Rich other rich people tend to have less chance of making use of you because they themselves don't need the extra wealth. So it is. Do you feel that it's a? Do you feel that it's a good safety precaution to take? Kind of. Oh, is it? Um, yeah. Do you think it's something that rich people do? I personally have friends from all walks of life, but I see where you're coming from in the sense that, um, you try to stick with someone in your own circle because you mm. know. It's safe. But at the same time. Now you have fame. Now I have a bit of that fame as well. So it's very different. People want the fame now, right? Now you have yeah. double, not just the money, you have the fame. So now you have double things to watch out from. And like, um, it's so difficult. I think how I, um, how I assess my friends is like, what I've gone through in my life, were they there for me and stuff like that. You just have mm. like, you know, few like factors you need to factor in. But like, to your point, like, it's, uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, it's a defense mechanism kind of. Sometimes. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I mean, like, rich people also are fucking idiots sometimes, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sometimes I'm rather not friends, be friends with them because they're not nice people. A lot right. of rich people are not nice. Mm. They look down on people, especially the new rich and stuff like that. They're not mm. nice. And like, I, that, that's such a turn off for me. Whenever I see new rich mm. or like people that want to show off, I'm like, you know, like as Anna said, like, you weren't born, like, I'm born into it, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that's going to get you hate. No, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> you know, my dad is so... I, I have to tell the viewers, like, from young, right, my dad never raised me to believe that we are money. Mm. He would stop me at the bus stop and take a public bus to school. Mm. All my friends were chauffeured in Rolls Royces all day. And he raised us very different. He would fly us economy class. He would me and my mom would fly first class. Until I made my own money. He said, okay, fine, you can sit business if you want. And you spend your own money. But he was like, we'll give you the bare minimum you need in life. Mm. At what point did he start like, you know, son, here's a credit card. You can go shop at Chanel if you want. No, he never did that. No, never. He'll never support luxury things. Any luxury items, no. He said no. He's never supportive of it. Oh, he's, oh so you bought it all like with your own money, with all the... I mean, like, sometimes I like siphon for my mom. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like, know if siphon is the right word. I have to Google it, but like sometimes I... <laughs> You're just like... <laughs> Still her, Shana. Still need the earth, okay? Earth is that make me very difficult, okay? I need some comfort in Chanel, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my mom does help me on the side sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like you are more uh, American than Singaporean now, actually? That you've stayed Not in? Not really. Yeah. I think in, in, in Thai, I'm Singaporean 100%. American in the sense that I'm more um, with my openness and with my like uh, sharing with my life. I'm more public in that sense, but deep down, I'm Singaporean. Mm. I'm Gatsu. I, <laughs> you know, I'm very Asian. I eat Asian food all the time. I, yeah, in, deep down, I'm just 100% Singaporean. But in terms of my uh, outlook on life or like how I like um, with my Instagram stuff, I'm definitely very American in that sense. Yeah. Don't you miss Singapore? Don't you want to permanently come back here? Like ever. I would love to be here, but like, I don't know what to do there. What do you mean? <laughs> no, like, I think Singapore for me, like just the opportunities itself, like it's so limiting for me. Yeah. My field, like, you know, my whatever my brother's doing is perfect for Singapore, like investing and stuff. Like for me, I want to do something overseas. I want to do, you know, you you already took in Singapore. Why, why am I going to go there to do, right? <laughs> okay I think Singapore I'm misses you I think, I think I don't want you to go back I'm like what's the <laughs> I want you to come back because I miss you it takes so long for you to come back especially now with COVID it's so sad you know but I definitely miss Singapore I come back a lot you know I come back like twice a year right yeah but it's been it's been a while lah, I guess yeah let's let's talk a little bit more about how rich people live right like what are some of the very extravagant stuff that you've seen like rich people do that's so different like you know it's out of this world that we never really expected, you know, beyond the private jets and stuff like that. Like, do people really fly, like, to Paris, like, for a day? Yeah. 
Anna actually surprised, uh, uh, Anna actually told Andrew just pack the bags and didn't tell them anything. And then Kelly just thought it was for lunch mm. near the airport. And then Anna surprised was like, Kelly, we're going to Paris. Your bags are already packed. Oh my God. Still today, like Kelly talks about the trip because that was a surprise. And um, uh, that's one of them. The other, just, there's so many things like Christine closing down Rodeo Drive. Like who closed down Rodeo Drive? Yeah, I couldn't believe that that was true. That's like 100k at least to just close down that, that party. And then like, obviously like, even Christine, like the dresses she buys and stuff like that, they're all like 100k and above, like couture dresses. They're not like your normal ready to wear. It's made for her. Uh, those are some extravagant stuff. Um, I mean, jewelry, millions is nothing, you know, to these to to rich people. I think yeah. that is so crazy. You know, like Anna sounds like a uh, Christian Grey. I think there was a scene where he flew, um, the girl in the book like to uh to Paris to dine or something like that. I'm pretty sure it's in the book, or maybe yeah, it's like, in a helicopter like in, real, in real life too. And most and most of them they shop after hours. Like when, when I go shopping with Anna, it's like the store's closed. She will never go public hours. She always go only when the store closed. We saw in the show that she had uh, Dior bring clothes to her house. Yes, her that's store. what she does. Or she can go there and they, they shut the whole store for her and they clear everyone out. Wow, that's so crazy. Then what what about like you yourself? Do you do you do any of these crazy practices? I used to like spend crazy, but now I'm at this point like it's like career, career, career. So mm. I don't even like I can buy a nice car. I wouldn't buy the best car. I don't need it now. I'm mean, still not in the mood to like, I mean, I had Ferrari before, I had Lamborghini, I had Porsches and stuff. And like, at that time, I just wanted to, you know, maybe be flashy or like, you know, but now in my point of life, I'm like, I truly don't care what I have because I truly know what I have and what my family has. I don't have to show off. You're turning into your dad, Kane. You're turning into your dad. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. You'll be so boring. You'll just be like, oh. Well, I'm going to be boring. I'm going to go like be a reclusive person soon. <laughs> yeah, now you're going to be like, I'm going to drive a Volvo. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think so. You know, as you age, like, like for example, Anna sometimes, like she'll just carry a black backpack and like, it's just like East Pack. You know, I don't care. Sometimes I wear Nike and like, you know, because you know you have it or like, you know that you don't have to prove to anyone anymore. Mm. You know, when I, like Kevin talked to me, uh, Kevin was with me the other, day, the other day and he was like, do you feel you have to dress up to go into Dior? I'm like, no, at all. Because he feels that you have to go into like somewhere like Dior and you have to dress up and, you know, play the part. And like, if you truly have money, you can walk in like a beggar. Well, that's true. But that's only because they, they already recognize you and give you VIP treatment regardless, right? No? That's, that's also true. Yeah. <laughs> So you know that the whole scene in like uh, Pretty Woman where they look down on you if you look a certain way, I still believe that. I, I, I still believe that, you know, it is slightly true. Like, uh, you know, I think, it, I don't remember whether it was Kim who told me this before, but if you walk into a luxury store and you carry at least one luxury item, they will treat you completely differently because they see you as someone who is, isn't going to just waste their time. Yeah, I think majority of the people... Uh, follow that rule like if you don't look like the part they won't serve mm. you I, I definitely agree with you because it happened to me like years ago in Paris like, I mean I was dressed up even being dressed up they still look down on you right right yeah and stuff like but they're like you know this I was waiting for like half an hour and then the person walked by me he's like oh I have those two I have that in gold too I'm like what the fuck right I'm like yeah you know, you know so um, I think in general, the European stores are just really snooty. I don't know whether they're just racist against Asians or what, like, but they are super, don't give a fuck, like, when you go in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with you. And, like, there's this stereotype that you have to, but I feel like every service, like, like you'd be surprised that so many rich people don't dress up. Mm, that's true, that's true. I think that what they're trying to do, right, is reverse psychology. They're trying to make you go, like, oh, uh, you think that, I, you think that I'm not rich enough? I will buy the whole store. Right? <laughs> yeah. And then and then after that, they get like so much commission because you buy the whole store. Makes sense too. We can do that as well. <laughs> Let's talk about like um, how rich people date, right? Like in the show, we see uh, like, you know, Kelly and, and Drew and all that, that in their, being in love and, you know, a lot of the cast are like interested in each other. Like, is it, do you think that um, it is a thing that rich people only date rich people? I don't think it's rich people dating rich people. I think that it's also being practical as well. Because let's say you date someone, you know, and you really like the person. And then when it comes to like traveling, like expensive, mm. 
it gets very complicated. I think most people deal with that. Most rich people deal with that. So I think that's very complicated. Um, mm. I don't think it just, I think it's just being more practical um, at some point in your life. But um, I think with Andrew and Kelly, they have a quite, I don't know. Yeah. Compared what was the question? But I, I just like, you know, I, it's just more of a deep, like philosophical question that I kind of want to like discuss with you also for the sake of all my female followers, because I have most, most of my followers are female. Like how, like how possible is it to actually nap a rich guy? Because it feels like a lot of rich guys tend to want to date richer girls as well. Um, I think it's not the rich part. I think it's the, I think the person has to be, wants to have a drive and motivation mm. in life. You want to just date someone, okay, let's see your money. You don't want to date someone with no aspiration and no, no intent of like succeeding. It doesn't matter if you have money or not. But we, we have seen guys who are dating those gold diggers who are just like slutty girls, what? Haven't we? But that's what they want, right? The slutty girls and then they just dumb them, right? You know? Yeah, that's so, true. Like, yeah, yeah. But I do agree with you like, you know, why people date a certain or even be friends with a certain, um, you know, social status because sometimes it's just practical and like, and, and, and yeah, dating is like a big, big thing. Yeah. Mm, so personally for you, how would you know if somebody's interested in you for your money? Uh, or is it something that you just think you can't tell? Like, you know, because to a certain degree, everyone is interested in money. I think to a certain degree, everyone wants money. And also money is a very important tool in life, right? Mm. Everyone wants money. I think there's no denying of that. Unless you're a monk or something. Uh, but like, um, uh, what was the question, Sasha? Like, how do you know if somebody's dating you for money? I feel like um, <clears throat> I have better understanding now through the help of my dad and also through business dealings. I'm really, I, I have sort of clarity when I meet a person in five minutes, whether I know, like I met you, I'm like, you don't give a shit. You just want to, <laughs> you're just a fun person. And like, you know. No, I want to see all your private jet. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> you can see on Kim's. <laughs> okay, let's say on Kim's one together, okay? <laughs> So with it, it's just like a, a feeling. But how, how, what about if they just pretend? Like, you know, you can just pretend what? Can't you? I have made friends before that like pretend that and then it just backstab me. But like, this is life. And mm. I think it's experiences as well that we learn. You know, I'm sure you've gone through your fair share of like, you know, people that make use of you as well for your following, mm. for your <clears throat> I think you have a very good sense as well. It's true experience, right? We really don't yeah. know. It's true experience and failures and all these fucking cunts that, yeah. you know, realize like oh you're a cunt you know right it's true i think i think okay like okay i don't have a lot of wealth but i guess i do have a little bit of fame right so like my my like little sort of revelation about it is that you know like the fame will be a plus to certain people the fame will be minus to certain people because uh, uh, you know like some people don't like don't like the fame but with regards to people who are trying to make use of me for my fame i feel like to a certain degree i'm okay with it uh as long as i feel they sincerely like me as a person so that is that's is the only part where i can tell or can't tell like i guess you can act like you can bootleg and everything right but like if i feel that i do have a certain connection with you and we we bounce off well we get along well we agree on certain things you know like then I don't mind that you make use of me because I feel like to a certain degree, friends always help each other. And that's why I reached out to you, Sasha, because I knew you were following. <laughs> I knew it will benefit the charity. I was like, okay. <laughs> and then when we met, I was like, oh, genuinely, she's nice. Right. If not like, maybe after chat, I wouldn't be friends with you. But like, genuinely, I got you because I was like, oh my God, she's like the biggest in Singapore. And then it's such a good cause. And maybe she'll be interested in doing it. And then you also like, I want to see Vivian Sue, right? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I was like, okay, perfect. <laughs> right? So yeah. As your friends help out each other, and like, you know, the time when I met you at the charity dinner, I was like, oh my God, I told my friends, like, Isashi is actually very smart and super nice. So, yeah, to a certain extent, for sure, we're all like, sort of not making use of each other, but like, you know, that, um, yeah, maybe we have to find a better one than making you. Helping, helping each other, I guess, like, um, bouncing off each other's, uh, good stuff, I guess, maybe uh, that, yeah. Yeah. So I, I, as long as somebody is not kind of like solely with you for that reason of making use of you without liking you sincerely at least, and the person has your back, I feel like it's okay even if that person, you know, likes you for certain superficial things. Yeah, I agree with you. And most people like are opportunists. It's just what people like, or certain lines you cross. And you know, you know, we all know. Yeah. Mm. Okay, I think I, <clears throat> I think I have finished my questions already. So I think we've talked for a really long time. How long have we talked for? Uh? One hour. One hour. Okay, wow, that's a long, long conversation. 
favorite scene other than the anal stuff? Like, what was the one that actually like, wow, this is intense, or like, you know, were there any serious moments? Ah. Uh... Wow, suddenly you just asked me like, I cannot remember off the top of my head because I, I really enjoyed the whole show. Like, I love all of the episodes. Um, I think... One of my favourite scenes. What, what made this so different? Because I, I know the answer, like why, why this show was so different than a lot of other reality shows, you know? Was this something that just stood out to you? And then and also, I, I also like this show because it didn't show Asians like in the stereotypical way that all Asians have accents. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Shows you watch, right? And you're like, oh my god, the Asians like can play the piano so well. It's just all these like stereotypes. And this is the first, I think, show that show Asians being normal and American. Mm-hmm. I think that's what like, oh, this is great because there's no stereotype Asian in there, you know? I I yeah, it's true. I I and I love how like you guys are very, very unabashed about all the luxury that there is on the show. I remember I think I my my, my favorite parts were especially when you guys were showing off all the fashion and all of the extravagant parties. I think everyone likes to see these kind of things. It's just that like, you know, it's very trendy to hit billionaires nowadays. Um <laughs> But you know, everyone likes to see it because it's like, it gives you this hope like, oh, you know, maybe I'll make friends with one of these people and I can try to go around these exciting parties, you know, where Christine has, you know, like, I, I remember seeing on your IG story. You know, the parties are the best. Like, Christine has like the best parties. I think at one year, Anna's birthday, she gave away Rolex to every single guest. Oh my God! See, every... Rolexes, like, she gave, I know she gave away 30 Rolexes to like all her guests. That is next level insane. Is Christine that rich? Like, her... her, her... I'm gonna give the Rolex. That's what? Anna. What, what, Anna gave the Rolex or Christine did? Uh, Anna. Oh, Anna. <laughs> and then the other day we were on the boat and then Christine actually gave us all Cartier gifts. Every yeah. one of us. I saw on your IG story, I was just like, Kevin dropped him in the sea, right? Oh my God. <laughs> that was so funny. And then I think all the news outlets pick, picked it up, but it's true. Like stuff like that does happen when we're, we're all together. I swear I almost cried, you know, when I saw your IG story about that. <laughs> I swear I almost cried. I was just like, what the fuck is it? Don't tell me some bangle, like, you know. No, no, no. It's the Just On Clue ring. She bought Just On Clue for everyone. What is that? The nail ring. Oh, okay. <laughs> Mom, I'm still so sad. <laughs> Next time I'll invite you. I think we're, you know, season one actually we wanted to come to Singapore. We just couldn't, it's not easy flying 50 people to Singapore. Mm-hmm. I actually got the hotels, everything done and everything. The hotels were so happy to have us, but I think just timing it didn't work out. Oh, but if man. We could, yeah, no, no. I always believe, like, hopefully there's season two and then we can do something in Singapore, yeah. What's up with that, though? Like, I, I, I guess I forgot to ask that question because everyone must be asking about it all the time. We're also waiting. We have no idea, but I think it's doing really well and I think it's uh, trending really well all over the world. And a lot of, I think, even, like, Ellen Show picked it up, Vogue China... So I think there's a lot of potential to, to, to do more seasons. So we'll see. Netflix is really happy with the outcome. So mm-hmm. I don't see any new reasons. Only reason I see is our contracts, whether I'll negotiate harder. <laughs> I'm sure you will. You're a very tough negotiator, right? <laughs> You're just like, give me more money. It's just like how you forced uh, the poor guy to buy the fish mall. Oh, that was one of my favorite scenes, definitely. When you force him to buy the fish mall. <laughs> What's his name? Uh... <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. I, 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 I could see in his face that he didn't want to buy the fish mall. Okay. He didn't want even to. He didn't want to. Uh, no, the proposal. Yes, he did accept it. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> <didn't do> it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The but proposal. They're the sweetest couple ever. Like they're really nice family. And I just have to say, this entire cast, even Kevin. I think I told Kevin he's the special ingredient that made the show so special because he represented Middle America. He re- represented the average American that. You know, that, that just his outlook on this wealth. So I think mm. that's why the show is so su- successful. Also, thanks to him, because he was the, the audience. He represented the audience. And so much credit to him and the entire cast. Amazing. Wow. So when you guys hang out with Kevin, does he like, don't need to pay for stuff because you're just like, oh, you're the poor guy, like, uh, pay for your share. He's okay with it. He's actually, sometimes he chips in and obviously what he can afford, mm. you know, and stuff like that. You know, like the, the, the other day, like we did a charity event for like um, the hospital and like we all donated right and his mm. donation was sleeping with the girl that oh I should not have said it that <laughs> they provided one of them <laughs> oh my god one of the sponsors and I'm like Kevin you were the group text we're like you did your job by sleeping with her <laughs> 
no, it's true. Like that's what's the name. Like, oh you know? my god. Okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot for the very juicy information, Kane. They're gonna, people will go through my stories and kind of look who these people are but like there's one person <laughs> <laughs> well, sponsored from her from, from her because of him so thanks to him as well right okay so I guess we have come to the end of this interview it went on for a really long time <laughs> because I had so much fun chatting with you Kane me too yeah thank you me and my singlish is like full blown right now <laughs> <laughs> i think you still sound mostly american with a touch a touch of singaporean <laughs> coming to singapore i'm like auntie me pop eager you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay so thank you guys for watching this and uh follow kane on his instagram account um it's k a n e l and then it comes Kane Lim, out. right? Fine, Kane Lim. Yeah, on Instagram. Uh, it comes out. Yeah. His uh, photos you. were very nice. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Thank you, and you guys check out Bling Empire as well. And uh, if you're on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe and like this video. And if you're on Spotify, remember to also follow me on Spotify. Okay, I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye, Sasha. Bye. Bye.